there may be some aspiring writers in this uh, group who uh, want to do novels or short stories of your own. One of the things that you will probably hear uh, from a lot of uh, teachers and people who give advice to aspiring writers is uh, write what you know, at least in in the United States, in English literature, this is something always said to aspiring writers, write what you know. Um, when I was a young writer, I hated hearing that because I didn't know anything, really. <laughs> I, I was this kid from the projects in Bayonne, New Jersey. I had never gone anywhere, never had any money. I, I wanted to write fantasy and science fiction, but I'd certainly never seen a dragon. I'd never gone to another planet. I'd never done any of this stuff, so how could I write what I know? So I sort of rejected that and said, well, that's, that's bullshit. I'm not going to follow that advice. <laughs> but later, it, it, and when I actually became a writer, I began to understand the, the truth of that. It, it's not writing what you know in terms of the care and raising of dragons, or it's, it's writing the emotional truth of your own life and whatever whatever furniture you may put into your story, whether it's a realistic story about you know, what it's like to live in Barcelona in the year 2012 and uh, you know, the day-to-day -day struggles of life, or whether you're casting it in a, in a historical context, what it was like to live in Spain in 1492 or whatever when uh, the Moors were being kicked out and the Jews were being kicked out and Columbus was discovering America or whether it's a far distant planet or a, a fantasy world, the core of it is still what you know in terms of emotional truth. That's what's going to make the characters come alive. That's what's going to make it real. Now, I have a friend, a contemporary, who uh, served in the United States Armed Forces during the Vietnam War. And he had, he had uh, some very traumatic experiences on, over there. He, he saw some horrible things. He, he did some things. He uh, learned a lot about war and the nature of humanity and um, it's clear that uh, this, this, these events that happened to him between, you know, roughly the ages, I guess, of 18 and 22 or 23 became in some ways the defining characteristic of his life. And he has subsequently written a number of books, and some of them are realistic books, uh, novels about the Vietnam War, novels about coming home after the Vietnam War. Some of them are science fiction books about other wars in a thousand years from now fought among the stars. But you can read those other war, those, those science fiction books, and you can see that the power in them derives from the fact that he served in the Vietnam War, and he knows what he was talking about. There's that, that core of emotional truth there. He's writing what he knows. He's writing from the heart or from the gut, as you might say. Um, And that's what makes his work, his best work, so powerful. When he doesn't write about war, I think uh, he produces some very entertaining books, but they don't necessarily have the same power as when he's writing about the subject that he really knows. Um, which brings me back to me, who did not serve in the Vietnam War, who in fact was part of the anti-war movement resisting it. I was at home. Um, I went to college and then I got out of college. And the big defining characteristics of my life in, in these periods was I had a number of women who broke my heart. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems very trivial compared to serving in the Vietnam War, but boy, it didn't feel trivial to me. And uh, um, I, the questions of love and romance and sexuality and existential loneliness um, occupied my mind and obsessed me for years. And as a result, I produced a series of intensely romantic science fiction short stories and novels 
about guys who were getting their hearts broken among the stars, <laughs> uh, including Dying in the Light, which I think is the ultimate, uh, the ultimate example of it. So I too was writing what you know, even though I've never been to the planet Warlorn or um, seen a society like that of High Kavalan or any of the things that were in there. Those were the imaginative constructs, but the emotional heart of the book goes back to write what you know. <laughs>